Hello there, Lawrence Grayson back again for shortformvideo.com with another After Effects tutorial for you to have a go at. Now if you've watched the uh, digital music player preview that I had on my YouTube channel a couple of weeks ago, then you'll already know what we're doing today. But uh, failing that, as you can see from the preview, we've got a number of elements uh, in play. We've got the uh, progress bar, which is keyed to the length of the track you've selected. We've got a couple of pieces of marquee text, which can be uh, fairly arbitrary and set to your needs. We've got a time display. I think possibly the most important element here is the audio reactive waveform that we've got. So that's enough chat, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is bring in our audio track. And I'm using a licensed piece of music called Evolving Mood, which uh, I, I acquired from uh, shockwavesound.com, which is one of the music bureaus that I tend to use. And uh, as you can see from the duration, it's 2 minutes and 46 seconds long. Now to create a composition that matches that exactly, I'm just going to grab the WAV file and drag it onto the new project icon and let go. And that will uh, create a project using the last project settings but set to the length. So as you can see on, on the timeline, we actually have a project which matches the uh, length of the audio track perfectly. But sadly, um, it doesn't actually match the size. So uh, I'm just going to change that by hitting Ctrl and K to bring up the composition settings. I'm going to rename it to Digital Music Player Final and I'm going to set the dimensions to how I want them which is the uh, 720p preset that I normally use and I'll hit OK. Next step is to create a new background colour so right click select New and Solid and we'll call this Panel BG um, pick a fairly bright tone because we'll be uh, applying an effect later that will take a lot of the brightness out of it. So uh, if you wanted it to look kind of like that, then you'd probably step it up to uh, a brighter version of it. So in this case, I'm using 162, 234, and 250 as the RGB values and just hit OK. Right, so that's the basis of our uh, final composition set. Uh, the first thing we're going to create is uh, the progress bar. So we're going to create a new composition and I call it surprise surprise progress bar. I'm going to set the width to 800 pixels and the height to 50 pixels and hit OK. Actually one of the things I might do is just go back and set the background color to white so you can see what I'm doing a little bit more clearly. Go to your rectangle tool, make sure the fill is switched off and the stroke is switched on. Now in this case we're going to use a dark grey which is uh, RGB 404040. Set the stroke width to 20 pixels and then when you double click on the rectangle tool it'll automatically create a rectangle with the outline colour that you selected. We'll just rename this outline I'm going to select the uh, shape layer and hit Ctrl D and that'll create a duplicate as you know and we'll rename this progress bar. With the progress bar selected go back up to your stroke and turn it off and then select fill and make sure it matches the color that you selected for the stroke previously which is 40 40 40 and hit OK. And as you can see that's created a solid um, element which completely overlays the outline we created earlier. Still with the progress bar layer selected, tap P to bring up the position values and with the timeline indicator at the beginning of the timeline, click the stopwatch to create a new position keyframe. Then take the timeline indicator to the end of your timeline. Now you can hit the end key to do that or drag the, the uh, TLI to the right position and create another new keyframe at the end point of your composition. Now with your timeline indicator back at the beginning, hold down shift and just drag the X value until the bar is just off screen. So that'll set it to minus 400 because our um, composition width is actually 800. Now when I scrub through the timeline you'll see we've got this fairly simple progress bar which is matched to the exact duration of the audio track in our main comp. 
So if I bring that progress bar back into the main comp, that's how it looks. Okay, next step is to create some marquee text. Now marquee text is basically stuff that scrolls in and scrolls out. So we'll call this marquee text one because there are going to be two versions of this. I'm going to leave the width at 800, set the height to 70, and just hit OK. Go to your text tool and type in something arbitrary like artist title. Now you'll see that I've already selected the uh, the system typeface and that's the one we're going to use here. If you don't have uh, the system typeface there are plenty of other kind of 8-bit looking um, typefaces for free download from things like defonts.com um, but you should have at least something very similar to this installed um, as standard on every machine that you have. So uh, I want that to be 60 pixels high and we'll just uh, use the cursor keys just to nudge it into place. Now you'll see that the composition again has defaulted to the full length of the uh, of the track. This isn't what we want but we'll change that later. For now we just want to crop this to about five seconds long and the simplest way to do that is to click on the time display in the top left hand corner of your project panel and just type 500 and that'll move the timeline indicator to exactly the five second mark. And I'm just going to drag the outside handle of this clip and hold down shift to lock it into place and that'll just crop it down to the five second mark. You could also use alt and close square brackets which is a, a kind of shortcut to this but uh, that's entirely your choice. Now we've cropped it to the right size we're going to tap P again to bring up the position keyframes Tap the stopwatch to create a new keyframe for position and just drag the Y value until the text is off screen. Now in my case that's a value of 135. Holding down shift, tap page down twice to advance 20 frames on the timeline and we'll just reverse that position change and bring the text back up to a value of 60. Now when I scrub through you'll see we've got a five second sequence where the title pops up and then disappears at the five second mark. Now I'm just going to duplicate this three times, grab the second layer, hold down shift just to snap it to the uh, end point of the preceding layer and I'll just change that to track title and we'll do the same thing with the third layer hold down shift and we'll snap it to the end of the preceding layer double click and we'll call this another title here. Once you've got all the titles um, you want and you can have as many or as few as you like grab the composition boundary handle and again holding down shift to snap it to the end layer we're just going to crop the uh, work area to create a short composition. It's actually 15 seconds long, as you'd imagine. By going to Composition and Trim Comp to Work Area, and that'll just uh, get rid of all that excess space. Now, when we go back to the final comp and pull in Marquee Text 1, you'll see we've got a 15 second long track. I'm just going to nudge that into place above the uh, progress bar. Might give it a little bit more space. That's pretty much how we want it to look, but we want it to uh, continuously loop. And the way to do that is right click, select time, and then enable time remapping. And then in the time remap properties, hold down Alt and click on the stopwatch, and just type loop capital O out and then open brackets, close brackets and click somewhere else to finish it off. Then drag the marquee text handle just to expand the layer right to the end of the sequence. Now when I scrub through you'll see we've got the uh, loop of that pre-comp happening throughout the composition. 
Okay, I'm going to do a similar thing with the uh, second marquee text. So we'll call this marquee text 2. I'm going to make the height um, 50 pixels and the width 600 pixels. And just hit OK. Again, create a new text layer. I'm going to set the uh, text size to 40 pixels. Again, make sure it's aligned left in the paragraph alignment settings. Now, because the text here is going to be fairly long, it's actually quite difficult to type in because we want it all on a single line. So the best way to do that is type it into Notepad and copy and paste it. Then double click on your um, existing text layer and just hit Control V to paste in your new longer text. So when I scroll out, you'll see the text itself is much, much longer than the project. So to get this scrolling, select your text layer, tap P, create a position keyframe at the beginning of the composition. Scroll the X value so that the type starts off the screen. Then we'll go to the 30 second mark. And we'll create another keyframe. And I'll just drag the X value, holding down Shift to make it a little bit faster. So the text scrolls off the left hand edge of the screen. Now we've got a sequence where that line of text scrolls across the screen and off it in 30 seconds. So again, I'm going to, I'm going to grab the work area bar and just lock it down to the end frame. Go to composition and trim comp to work area. And that'll just give us that 30 second comp that we're after. We'll put in marquee text two and just align it underneath the progress bar. It's not quite where I want it to be, so I'll just nudge it into place. And again, right click on the layer, select Time Remap. Alt click on the Time Remap to bring up the layer properties and type loop out, open bracket, close bracket and click away. Drag the end of the layer to match the end of the composition. And now we've got both of our marquee texts working pretty much as we want them to. Okay, so we're starting to get somewhere. Next thing you're gonna do is create the time display. So I'm just gonna create a new text layer. We're gonna add a, an expression to this, so it doesn't really matter what you type in, but it just helps to line it up beforehand. Again, System is the font and 40 pixels is the height. So just line that up. Just bring the rulers in, make sure I'm lined up to the baseline. Okay, twirl down the properties for your text that you just created. Alt and click on the source text value and type in the following expression. Time with a lower lowercase t to current format, open bracket, close bracket. Now I'm gonna zoom in on that so you can see exactly what I've done because it's important you get the syntax correct. And when you click away, you'll see that the uh, placeholder text has been replaced by this expression, which gives you an hours, minutes, seconds, frames display. And that's almost what we want, but not quite. We don't want the hours and we certainly don't want the frames. Now there's probably some kind of expression you could add to that to uh, round up and round down, but the simplest way to fix this is to basically uh, select your text layer, hit Control, Shift and N to create a new uh, mask. And then the moment you've created your new mask, hit Control and T to bring up the uh, bounding boxes for the transform of the mask. And we'll just crop the hours off and the frames off. And we'll just nudge that back into place. 
So now when I scrub through the, uh, the composition, you'll see that that time readout matches perfectly with the duration of the composition, which is pretty handy. Okay, home stretch now. I'm going to duplicate the panel background with Control D. We'll rename it to EQ. And go to your Effects and Presets panel, and in the Generate section, find the Audio Waveform effect and drag that onto your EQ layer. Now the default settings for this aren't quite what we want, but there's a couple of things we need to do before we can actually enable this. We need to select the right audio layer. Now it defaults to the same layer that it's on, but we want to set it to the Evolving Mood WAV file that we've got. And basically that will then use the amplitude of that WAV file to create a waveform as you see here. So we just need to play with this a little bit to make it look how we want it to look. We'll take the displayed samples down to 12 from 120 and we'll change both the inside color and the outside color to the same gray we've been using throughout which is 40 40 40 and then we'll select uh, the display options as digital. Now you'll see it's pretty spread out at the moment. So I'm going to scroll the start point right across to the end of the uh, progress bar. And I'm going to increase the thickness to about 6 and the softness to 0. Now with the EQ layer selected, hit Control Shift and N to create a new mask. Then Control T and just bring up the bottom part of the mask to crop the bottom off the waveform. Now when I scrub through, it's creating um, an audio reactive EQ, which is exactly what we wanted. But it's not quite where we want it to be, so we're just going to select the EQ layer and bring it up. So that it matches the baseline of the text. Okay, last thing to do is just put some arbitrary text in. So we'll type MP3 and from 28 kilobits per second. Looks about right. Okay, that'll do. Now we've all gone a little bit off center, so I'm going to select the every layer from the EQ upwards and just nudge them across just to center it all up a bit. Final thing to do is create the grid. So we're going to duplicate the panel background again with Control and D and drag it up to the very top of our layer stack. We'll rename it grid. In your effects and presets panel, find the grid effect. Just drag that onto your new layer. Set the color to black. Actually, we'll set the color to 40, 40, 40, just to be consistent. Hit OK. Change the size from corner point to width slider. Change the border to 2 and the width to 4. Now, I'll just scroll in and show you what's happened there, because obviously, uh, YouTube is going to compress this, so you may not be able to see it all that clearly. That's created a very fine grid, which gives us that kind of digital readout style. If you like, you can go to Panel Background, go to Layer Styles, and select Inner Glow. And in the Inner Glow properties, 
change the highlight color to black, set the blend mode to darken, and we'll just increase the size to give it that shadowed look. Okay, so I'll just create a RAM preview and we'll see how that looks. Okay, so it's looking pretty good. The uh, audio reactive waveform is working, the marquee text is all working, and the time display is all working. So I think we're pretty much done here. The project file for this is already available for download from shortformvideo.com. And uh, hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.